Welcome to an epiphany with Tiffany. My name is Tiffany and I've just had an epiphany. This podcast is all about Christian singles looking for community. Christian dating can be quite a mess these days. I'll share stories from my guests and practical tips for successful love. Dating shouldn't be this hard, right? So grab your favorite snack or drink and curl up with this episode and you might just have an epiphany of your own. Ooh, okay. So let's talk about um, if you're in a season of not dating and you meet a guy who you are really attracted to, who is amazing, would tell would you tell him about your season of singleness? Would you consider ending it for the right guy? Do you ever yes. use such a line to let guys down easily? Because I I like to respond to that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So yes, I have been on the other end of this. Mm. And I'm honestly still left wondering a bit um, because it's the type of thing that um, I met this person um, and very shortly after he decided he needed to go in close singleness. So I was left wondering like, well, when you come out of it or what, or, you know, and so honestly, it's left me with a little bit of a a confused mindset on the close singleness thing, because I, I think I, you know, it occurs to me, okay, yes. Yeah, so if you do meet a potential one, you know, that really stands out while you're in close singleness, then what's the right thing to do? Kind of like you were asking. And, you know, for me, I was, um, at the time, really feeling like um, we were a great match. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, then I start asking questions like, um, well, you know, trying to figure out, well, how long is this going to be, you know, and different questions like that. And so, um, yeah, I don't have a great answer because I really do have more questions than anything um, on that particular subject. Um, you know, if I were to put myself in that position, um, you know, I think I would tend to give somebody a time frame or something, especially if I wanted to hang on to them. But also, if I really felt like it was a God thing of meeting the person, then, you know, somewhat I'd be like, okay, isn't this kind of defeating the purpose, you mm. know, and, and that's, that's really hard, I think, but, um, I've not gotten, uh, from, from the situation that I experienced, I've not gotten a clear picture as to how long or why or anything. And so it made it very difficult to know how to proceed on my part, because, you know, I'm not one of those people who's looking to rush into anything. So I was honestly willing to wait mm -hmm. if I knew that I was waiting for something. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it definitely left me confused. And I think that would be something I would encourage guys to at least be clear in what their plan is, you know, and clear whether this is interest deferred or whether it is um, a never, you know, mm. and I can see how the guy would not want to keep the girl waiting. Um, I, I did not wait. You know, I went ahead and uh, when I saw nothing was happening for a while, I, I went ahead and did, you know, get to know the guys. But um, at the same time, you know, he's in the back of my mind. And mm -hmm. so because it's been left unclearly. So that would be the thing I would say is just please be clear and say, you know, that you would be interested in pursuing something after your closed singleness, if you choose to have the closed singleness supersede your interest. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, because I've never personally been in an official like closed season of singleness. I, yeah, I've taken time off dating but I wouldn't have sure. called that like a closed season of singleness. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, so I liked this question because I'm like, I don't even know how I would answer this because I've never been there, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah. And I actually know who that question came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, always fun, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, I know why you're asking it, Um, but it's fine. <laughs> um. <laughs> But it's still like, I think the point too of like, do you ever use that as a line to let somebody down is like, 
is huge, you know? Yes. Like, instead of just being like, oh, hey, like you said, make it clear one way or another. Are we waiting until after you're done or right. is this a, a no never thing? You know, just say it. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Because that is not kinder to be unclear like mm-hmm. that, you know, um, and, and it just doesn't it doesn't turn out better yet. Yeah, I've had a conversation with a lot of people recently how sometimes we in the Christian realm will over spiritualize things and like use God as a crutch. (laughs) Very true. That's an awesome statement. Awesome point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Instead of just saying the hard thing (laughs) of like, you know, I'm just not interested in you. Like, I don't know how else to say it. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I I agree. And I think sometimes, um, sometimes we, here's a rabbit trail. Mm. We, (laughs) we, let's go. (laughs) um, Wait for God to lead on decisions that maybe we're supposed to make. And also, one of the things that I like to think about is I don't remember the verse, but um, talking about God leading our steps. God doesn't lead us sitting on the couch, not moving. Mm. And so we do sometimes have to make a decision before he shows us more of the way, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Amen. Say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we're not, cause I, I know exactly what passion you're talking about, but I'm like, I can't think of the exact verse either, <laughs> but I know what you're talking right. about. Um, but it also like points to, um, you know, faith without works is dead. Like if you're not stepping out in faith and actually making steps to act out that faith, That's then awesome. it's still, it's still dead. Like you're, you're still not fulfilling what we're set up to do. So that's a yeah. good point. Yes, definitely. That's, that's a little soapbox moment. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, I mean, that's something I've had to learn, you know, like in, yes. in instead of sitting back and going, oh, I'm just waiting for my guy to come knocking on the door. Exactly. I have to still put myself out there, which is scary. Yes. Yes. And but, I was even debating today, literally, what percent is, is us and what percent is God? And then that mm-hmm. goes into one of the other questions of, is there the one? Because then that's going to be a little bit different in the way that you do it. Because if God's bringing him, then all I have to do is work on me, you know, pretty much. But if it's up to me to find him, then that puts a whole different spin on it, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a good point. Huh. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to mull on that one for a little. While. <laughs> when you figure out the answer, let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Okay, I need to I need to like bring that in, but um, because now you have my mind like reeling. <laughs> 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 but it's that, that's so true, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, then I mean it would it would help so much to know because then you would handle it in a different way, you know. Exactly, like how I mean, because we know we have free free will, right? right. And so right. it's like, okay, so at what point does that free will coincide with God's plan? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who yes. mind is blown on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like. It's like a little bit beyond comprehension there. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that we're going to have to ask him in heaven and be like, okay, so what was this really? <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? I wish I could ask him right now. <laughs> I know, but I don't think our brains can handle the capacity <laughs> or have the capacity for that, you know? Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably in the same realm as quantum physics, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, exactly, because he's not in time. So, yes. and we are in time. So that's, ooh, okay. Yep. We're going to have to reel in this tra- rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be up late tonight co- contemplating all of these things. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so true though. 
Yep. Cause I mean, you throw in the, you throw in predestination too. And like, are yeah. we, uh, are we literally predestined to meet our quote one or is there more than right. one? Because there's different stages of life and like, you know, sometimes we'll lose yeah. a spouse or a partner or whatever. And does that mean we're just stuck with not having anybody else? You know, my answer to that question and of course you know i don't know but my opinion on that is that because god knows the future god knows if we are going to lose a spouse and therefore our one could turn into our two so in other words i think that it could be set up the same way just that he knows it's going to happen more than once you know and and so that's that's my theory that it's still like our one but our one at a time you know yeah Um, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's a really good point, too. Good yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've been thinking about this a lot. So. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, you know, it's just I think this is the other another thing, too, like where we get we sometimes get caught up in like fear of like yes. we can we can mess it up, you know, yes. but if we really have faith. You can't mess it up. <laughs> exactly. Faith versus fear. I mean, they antidote each other. Mm-hmm. And so if we're having a fear moment, we have to work on building our faith, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what I kind of realized was actually something I took from a sermon, which, I mean, it, you know, it's obviously in the Bible, but, but you know, that they're direct antidotes, then just building your faith can reduce your fear. And honestly, I have, days or even within the day that I swing back and forth and I can tell which I'm in, you know, and, you know, fear says you're, you know, you're running out of time. You're never going to find him, you know, and faith says a a lot. Fear says a lot more than that, but that's the short version. (laughs) Um, And then faith says, God's got it all worked out. It's going to be so beautiful, so much better than you can expect, so much better than y- your wildest dreams. I mean, not perfect, of course, but like the person, the experience that, you know, um, that he's going to exceed your expectations and the wait is going to be worth it, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and that's when faith takes over for however long it takes ever one day one hour whatever and then you know you have to fight fear again you know Mm -hmm. and uh and then of course you know the fear comes in of of the thing that some people actually are posting about today is that you know god doesn't guarantee us a spouse he's never spoken to me and said you're going to get married you know um i will tell you something really weird rabbit trail but (laughs) i've had two different dreams where I ask, it was asking people in the dream, you know, it wasn't dreaming that I was asking God, but, and, and I don't put a lot of stock in dreams generally, but this is for, I guess, the, the amusement factor of nothing else. Uh, but <laughs> the first dream, I asked two different people if I was going to get married and they both nodded yes. Mm-hmm. Um, the second dream, this was, you know, significant, you know, I don't know, month or two apart, I guess. Um, the second dream, I asked somebody if I was going to get married in the dream and he was like, definitely, you know, <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll see if that's right or not, but yeah. Yeah. I think I've had this conversation a couple of times where it's like, when you have that desire, you know, yes. it's there for a reason, whether it's something that God placed there because he's preparing you for it or, you know, it's just like the natural human desire, but like, he's also, that also doesn't mean you're going to get it. Cause sometimes we have to sacrifice things. Right. And yes. not just marriage and children. And like, you know, there's, there's other things, right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's many things that can be considered a desire. <laughs> um, right. But, you know, I've personally prayed like, oh, I don't even know how many times, you know, like if this is not of your will, Lord, like remove the desire, you know, so that's how I kind of like judge it is if that thing starts to fade away, then obviously it wasn't something that he wanted for me. But if it grows stronger, then I'm like, OK, well, this is going to happen. It just just might or it's just not going to be on my time. Not might be. It will not be on my time because just, it's not. I can guarantee yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so some question that I've asked a couple of guys I've gotten to know, including the one that uh, I was referring to a minute ago um, about the close season dating. But I ask, so does our desire for marriage, for marriage, originate with us? Or does God put that desire in us? Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I would say, I'm like, now that I'm thinking about it, it would yes. make sense that he puts it in us because that was representation yeah. of his um, whole, you know, relationship and like, in what the church as his body is supposed to be. You know, we are a representation yes. of that marriage. So huh. I agree with you. And I also agree with you for another reason, which is, can you think about something in your life that you've always wanted? So like for me, it's really been marriage. Like I was under seven when I knew that I wanted to be married. It's never changed since that. Like mm -hmm. absolutely new. Um, but then I have acquired desires like um, through life, you know, partway through, I got the desire to try dancing, uh, like mm -hmm. country dancing and stuff. And I like it, but it's not a desire of my heart. It's very different. Mm -hmm. It's an acquired taste. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And whereas the other thing I feel like I was born with is a love for animals. So I think God put that. So to, I, I liken that and desire for marriage as being much more similar and much more things that God put in me as my essence. Mm. And so you see the difference, mm -hmm. you know, you can like dancing. I acquired sometime as, I don't know, I was 20 or so, you know, that was not something I wasn't born a dancer, you know? Right. But I feel like I was born an animal lover and, and pretty much born with the desire to be married. So my mm -hmm. inclination is yes, to say that God put the animal lovingness in there. God put the desire for marriage in there. Now, without, since these will be anonymous, I will speak on one other thing, which is a little confusing, mm -hmm. which um, the desire for kids has actually flip flopped back and forth. Okay. So I don't know what God is doing with that. Um, I actually, be, when I was young, like probably 10 to maybe 18 or 19 or somewhere in the teens, mm -hmm. 10 to somewhere in the teens. I was obsessed with children, like mm -hmm. wanted to hold them, babysit them, everything, all the time, uh, wanted to have 10, all of that. And then in my 20s, at least by then, it disappeared. And I really don't know what God's will is in that area at this point. I'm kind of noncommittal, you know, one way that is like, I think I'm going to discuss it with the person, you know. Um, yeah. And, but it's like, okay, so what is God doing with that? Is it because of my age that, I mean, I'm not too old technically now, I'm not quite 37. So um, it's, you know, it, but, it, or is God removing that because it's not going to happen, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's just, it's just weird. And I don't post about that much in the groups just because I don't want somebody to make a preconceived decision. I want to be able to discuss it with them, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, because I'm still open to it, it's just like, it's not a craving like getting married is, you know? Yeah. It's different. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I guess we won't know for a while on all of this, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you bring up such great points though. Like, Again, for me, it's always, I'm like, always have the desire to be married, always have the desire to be a mom. And, yeah. you know, so on the flip side, like I've talked to guys in the past where they're like, oh, you know, they're either a single dad, so they already have some kids. Yeah. Um, or they are the type of guy that, you know, just doesn't want kids in general. And I'm over here like, well. <laughs> you know because like because some of the single dads i've talked to let me clarify some of the single dads i've talked to they're like oh i don't want any more kids like i have kids i don't want any more kids you know yes. and then i'm like but i want them <laughs> sounds like we need to trade people we need to work together here and send the other <laughs> send each other guys <laughs> yes i'm just like don't get me wrong i have no problem being a bonus mom whatsoever yes I just also would like my own if sure. the Lord Thanks. allows. Yeah. Sure. 
you know, and so that's just always been something that I've had to have that conversation and be like, so is this like a hard no thing or is this like a something you're open to? You know, yeah. where are you on that spectrum? Because yeah. if it's a hard no, then we have no business continuing to talk because right. I know that this is a hard right. yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no. And that's where it's great to know yourself. And it's weird because I would say that subject is kind of the only one that's up in the air for me. Everything else I'm pretty opinionated on, you know. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I mean, um, I feel like we have to be in today's age <laughs> yeah right you know, you know? Oh and i feel like yes. the older we get too the more we're like we're a little more stuck in our ways and you know mm-hmm. like yeah no i have this opinion and that's it <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah for sure well yeah and you know one thing i was thinking of too um before we leave this particular subject is you know the passages about um, desires of our heart and God granting desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then some of it's like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's define a desire of our heart. And I would say, I mean, you know, again, I would compare it a little bit to maybe the desires of our heart are the desires that he's put in us because they are stronger and more um, enduring. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I want to be married despite the fact that not all the marriages I've witnessed are good, you know, so I could have gotten scared off, you see. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also something else as far as the desires of our heart. So God took my love for animals and made it my calling, I believe, um, to rescue animals and like I started my nonprofit and everything. And, you know, so I feel like God put that in me because he wanted to do something with it. And so I I feel like that was definitely a desire of my heart. Um, I also had another um, desire of my heart, which was to meet my favorite singer. And that may seem shallow. Um, That may seem less, you know, important, but it was one of those things that wouldn't go away. Gnawing at me for three years, finally met my favorite singer, which was wonderful. I could go off into that. But here's the thing. God had more in mind. He not only satisfied that desire. um, We're now friends. Like, I mean, we interact much more than a fan in, um, in, you know, would and but but God had something way deeper in mind that I could have never imagined and I actually met my best friend because of my favorite singer and um, we actually met at one of his concerts but we actually met on one of his pictures on Facebook so I mean God can take something that we want and make it so much bigger than we ever imagined. Mm-hmm. And and so that's kind of what, in retrospect, I see, okay, God let that be a desire of my heart because it was going to lead to part of his plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay, before I go off on my little rant about that, I want to know who this favorite thing is. <laughs> oh, right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, it's, um, have you heard of the Irish tenors? Yes. They will. Okay, yes. So it's Anthony Kearns of the Irish Tenors. He's the one that stands in the middle. Uh-huh. And I I would I'd probably say he was like my first or second crush too, you know. Um, and so, you know, I saw him on PBS and everything back in the 90s. Was totally obsessed, not only with his voice, but just personality, expression, all that. Looks, <laughs> all that. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, yeah, I literally was I tried to learn everything I could about him. Yeah. And in uh, September 17th, we just passed the anniversary, September 17th, 2001. I actually got to meet him when he came to Tennessee and did a solo concert here. And so I have a, a picture with him, which I don't have to insert here, but <laughs> I would like to. Um, and then, uh, you know, got to meet him afterwards um, at a meet and greet that they had Um I mean, that's where the picture was taken. Um, and then uh, it was crazy. It went, you know, I was satisfied after that. You know, got to talk to him, ask him some questions. Was satisfied after that. Did not see him for 15 years. And wow. then he came back to Nashville with the Irish tenors. And we had become 
Facebook friends shortly before that. And so I ended up getting to meet up with him there and get another picture with him. It was it was 15 and a half years to the day. Crazy. Wow. It was a St. Patrick's Day. Um, and so then I have that picture and then I have a picture with the Irish tenors. They were not actually doing a meet and greet, but uh, Anthony let me come up. So it was crazy. Um, come up to the green room, you know? Yeah. And then, um, basically we stayed in touch and like now I've eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner with them. It's crazy. I've become like one of the little VIP ladies that follows him around. I mean, I don't follow him everywhere, but when he's in my area, you know, whether it's like the Southeast, you know? Um, and so, you know, sometimes I wish me a happy birthday. Sometimes I wish him a happy birthday. You know, it's just crazy. So I'm very satisfied with the way that turned out. And then meeting Laura through him was insane. Like I said, we met on, um, we met on a photo. Um, it was a photo of her with him. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, blah, blah, blah. I forget, you know, what we said. We became instant friends. We've been friends ever since. We met for the first time at one of his concerts in Williamsburg, Virginia. And um, that's actually the only time we've been in person together, but we do video calls and text every day. And she is like, again, like she is an example of what gives me hope for finding that man is Mm. before her I'd always wanted a best friend and I had tried to become best friends with certain girls and they just wouldn't they wouldn't have it Mm -hmm. and then Laura comes along and she blows them all out of the water like she is so perfect for me yeah um and and vice versa um very similar personality types I'm an extrovert she's an introvert and you know uh we even we're so well matched that we actually started this joke of I just need a male you that's all yeah it'll be perfect and so you know so she she does restore my faith in in dreams you know Mm -hmm. um because uh, dreams as in not you know nighttime dreams but it wishes you know um and honestly there's just no way for me to believe that god didn't bring us together very specifically and and even create us to be best friends Mm -hmm. you know it's it's just unbelievable neither neither of us had had a best friend and when i became friends with her i didn't think there was any way i could possibly you know she could possibly be i could possibly be her best friend brother um but she was my best friend and then come to find out i'm her best friend you know and so anyway it's just it's just amazing um the way that that all that worked out so anyway I can make that story longer, but that's enough <laughs> of that. But just one of God's blessings for sure that that turned yeah. out to be a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And I okay, so story time. Um yes. <laughs> so the I was in a bunch of different groups last year around this time. Um and I was actually adminning one of them. Yeah. And that was the whole thing. But anyway, it's fine. So <laughs> I, through those groups, I met, like, so many different people, right? And um, we all have been, like, jokingly celebrating our one-year anniversaries. <laughs> That's like... Um, and so it was really cute. Like, yesterday was one um, with two different girls, and they they have been... We, three of us have been through a lot together also, but we haven't actually met in person yet, so we're hoping... Yes. We're hoping. Um, but... Oh. The only reason that I'm in 824 is because of one of the guys that I met in this other group last year. And so if you if you think about that and how now I'm doing this because of yeah. that friendship and it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> exactly. Wow. So neat. Mm hmm. Yeah, and like, and he, he and I haven't actually met in person yet either. Like, we're gonna get to meet for the first time at the me- the meetup in November. Oh, um, awesome. so I'm excited about that. Like, and we're just we're homies, and it's just like, yeah, I'm like, dude, I needed more guy friends, and like, you came along, and I also needed more girlfriends, and so I have a ton more of those. Um, <laughs> Maybe even eighty or whatever. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, right? By the end yeah. of this, I'm gonna have over a hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Absolutely. Um, which is so cool though, because it's all about the community. And I had been praying about community for a really long time. And I wasn't expecting it to come from online. Like I really honestly wasn't. And yeah. here it is. So I will take that's it. Awesome. You know, that's and awesome. I'm going to try my hardest to go to as many meetups as I financially can. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, because I want to be able to meet everybody in person. Um, quite a Absolutely. few of the ladies that I've already interviewed will be there. So in November. That's, so that's right. Now, what, what location is the November one? It's in Indiana. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So I might miss that one, but I've heard that some people from 824 are coming to Nashville in the end of October, and then um, they're having, you know, the HOD conference in Nashville, which I'm, I mostly want to go to, to meet anybody from, you know, the groups, you know, the various groups. <laughs> yeah. So let's keep this one to 15 minutes as best we can. <laughs> okay. Because okay. um, I'm curious to hear your perspective. Um, so because you talked about in the question, what are your expectations as far as a man leading? Um, I knew it was going to be that way. <laughs> yep. I'm like, I want to know because I feel yeah. like, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. You know, yes. so very interestingly, you know, I... I do love a lot of traditional um, stuff, you know, the, the guy doing some, some traditional guy things, but I get jumpy very easily because we have this whole thing of, I feel like um, a lot of guys out there won't put a number or percent, but, um, kind of embrace the part of the Bible that talks about the wife submitting, but yet you don't see a lot of guys going out there going, I want to die for my wife. You know, what about mm -hmm. that part of the, you know, verse? I think it's like the same verse, the same passage, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's, it sort of gets me jumpy because I have seen it, definitely seen it done wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, really, it really unnerves me because, you know, here we are, we are human, we are not perfect. And so to recreate what God has in mind may not be perfect, <laughs> therefore. <laughs> um, and so I think, yeah, my, my fear gets in there um, when it comes to the patriarchal movement, a very he heavy handed man um, who basically takes the control and leaves the responsibility. And that that scares me a lot. Um, and I think I would almost rather, you know, I, I don't want to be unbiblical, but I would almost rather lean toward the direction of, you know, a mutual partnership, which again, I think is part of what the Bible is talking about, but people like argue that point because mm -hmm. then it's, you know, then it gets pushed farther, but you know, the wife's submitting, you know, and all that. And so it, I'm very, there's such a fine line. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I think, um, I don't think he's in the group anymore, but there was a post back that was pretty good about this subject. Um, but it, it's like leading is fine. Like I don't, it, I'm not power hungry. I'm not, you know, I don't have to lead. I mean, I lead my own organization, but I'm not this, you know, person that's bent on leading. I would love for my husband to open up the Bible. And if, if I did have a family to, to lead, be the spiritual leader. I'm mm -hmm. good with that, you know, and that there, there are lots of ways it looks fine. You know, if it's done perfectly, obviously the Bible has a good, you know, standard, mm -hmm. but you know, when you think of Jesus, how controlling did he seem? Not at he all. Never struck me, he never struck me as controlling. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like there was this, there was this gentleness and grace about how he handled people. And I honestly think we as humans have trouble emulating that. Mm -hmm. And so 
therefore, I, it's, it's one of the big questions that I ask guys is, how do you see the gender roles? And I recently had a guy answer me and he had some of it right and he had some of it not right. And so that was kind of the end of that because I really don't want to be stuck in a power struggle. That's not what it's about. And one of the things that um, I think it's um, Ephesians 5, maybe 533, um, but where it talks about women respect your husbands and husbands love your wives. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to be very important that men appreciate respect above all and women appreciate love above all. Mm -hmm. And so there to me is an example of how it's very mutual. You're, you know, it's not this women respect your husbands, end of story. Yeah. You know, and so it's almost, I think it's also encouraging us to do our lesser strong point because I think we as women we tend to love people easily Mm -hmm. um respect is not like it might take a woman a second to go okay well how do I respect like we don't respect each other like exactly we tend to love each other you know Mm -hmm. but men tend to respect each other and maybe not love each other you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's almost like the language that we speak is different genders and so i think it's interesting that god knew what each gender needed Mm -hmm. and some of that um uh the love and respect book uh, written by emerson egerich um it talks about that some and i haven't read the whole book but i think I think the part in the Bible, I can certainly uh, feel like I understand that isn't that interesting that God knew what was important. And, and I feel like that verse gets skipped over and kind of all you hear is women submit to your husbands, women submit to your husbands. And it's like, there's so much more to it. And if the rest gets forgotten, then you're going to have an oppressive relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. And if the part that's important to the guy is the wife submitting to him, then that is concerning. Like if somebody puts in their bio, like they only have 500 words and they put in their bio, I want to be the head. I want, you know, this and that. The concern is a red flag because I'm like, you could say so many things, but if you're concerned about the woman submitting to you above all, then we could have a problem here, you know? Mm-hmm. And again, it's such a fine line because obviously I believe the Bible, I agree with the Bible, but there's there's more. You can't just isolate that part. So I think, yeah, I think that's kind of my soapbox on the this, you know, this situation, but just um, that the kind of love that Jesus provided the church was obviously incredible and even kind of beyond our comprehension. Mm-hmm. And so have to combine that with the wife submitting part um, in order for it to be a loving relationship, you know, and in order for it not to become some sort of tyranny, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what my fear is, is I don't want to be a doormat. Then on the flip side, I'm not the feminist person that's going to make my husband a doormat. You right. know what I mean? Nobody should be the doormat in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Amen. I'm all like, I'm just going to let that roll right there. <laughs> I mean, I agree. And I went and I looked it up because I was like, is, is it 33? It is verse 33, by the way. So Ephesians 5, 33. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So nevertheless, this is the NSAB version. Um yes. Or in ASB, sorry. Um, Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife, even as himself. And the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. So. (laughs) You know, when you think of the way that it's put loving his wife as himself, that's a pretty significant love there, you know, because generally as humans, we, uh, unless we don't, unless have severe, you know, esteem issues or something, we tend to love ourselves mm-hmm. even too much, you know, I mean, that's, yeah. that's often the, the battle. And so 
I I think that's kind of um, the the heaviness of that verse. the The impact of that verse is is definitely um, is definitely there. So I feel like it's much more balanced than I think comes out in. Um, in sort of the the preaching of the the husband wife roles as uh, as it's often um, described, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I have very specific opinions as to why that is, but we don't have time for that. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the stories and the perspectives that were shared in this episode. Please share it with a friend whose dating life might need some help. Wink, wink. If you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at an epiph with Tiff. I really hope to see you there. There are multiple ways that you can support my show. You can pray for me, rate, review, and share any episode that you love. Or you can even financially contribute by going to patreon.com slash an epiphany with Tiffany. Until next time, I'm Tiffany, and I hope you just had an epiphany.